Good afternoon. I'm George Latimer, Westchester County Executive. It is Friday, May 15th, uh, just a little after two o'clock for our update on the Westchester coronavirus status. And we're here uh, hosted by uh, the town of Yorktown in Yorktown Town Hall. And I'm here with Supervisor Matt Slater. We just had a chance to participate with the supervisor and members of the council and others uh, in a mask distribution program, which they set up for the Yorktown residents over the Jefferson Valley Mall. Did a great job of doing it. We're happy to be a part of it. And Mr. Supervisor, thanks for letting us uh, be here. Tell us a little bit about what's happening in your town during sure, this period. Sure, sure. Well, first off, thank you. Uh, without your partnership, we wouldn't have had the masks in, in uh, conjunction with you and Haynes. Uh, and so we actually distributed uh, yesterday alone a thousand masks to seniors here in the town of Yorktown. And today we've opened it up to all residents to try to get them the, the masks they need. Uh, we anticipate distributing uh, close to 4,000 masks by the end of the day today. And that's going on to the Jefferson Valley Mall until 4 p.m. Uh, but here in Yorktown, uh, you know, we, we're continuing, our, our buildings remain closed to the public. We're continuing to offer services remotely or, uh, or online. Our library, uh, the John C. Hart Memorial Library, continues to provide incredible services uh, online, uh, including ordering your, your library card, which uh, mm -hmm. allows you to get a number of services. Our uh, Meals on Wheels program continues to grow. Uh, we have uh, over 130 uh, inbound seniors, homebound seniors, uh, that we continue to provide food for. Uh, and, our, and our nutrition center's done a tremendous job. We also do the cooking for the town of Somers and their Meals on Meals program. So right. they've had double duty. Um, yesterday, last night, I hosted a, a conversation about food security with our food pantries. And um, the fact of the matter is we're looking at uh, feeding about 500 families every weekend uh, through our food pantries. So uh, the food security issue is really growing uh, as the financial impact continues to be compounded. Um, yesterday, our uh, Reboot Yorktown Task Force put together some uh, parameters that, we're gonna, that we've rolled out for our businesses. Uh, we've uh, expedited the outdoor dining permitting process, trimmed mm -hmm. it from eight weeks to one week. We've eliminated the, the fee associated with that. So um, hopefully our restaurants and eateries will be able to expand their outdoor dining footprint. And then um, also for our retail to allow for sidewalk sales. And we're doing the same thing for our commercial retailers so that, uh, again, it trims it down from an eight-week process roughly to about a one-week process. And we've eliminated the fee for that as well. And all in conjunction to preparing for when we hit that first phase. And, and obviously the governor extended today the New York on pause order until May 28th, but we're trying to do everything in our power just to uh, prime the pump, so to say, so that when we can begin that uh, phase uh, reopening, we're ready to go. Well, Matt, it sounds uh, really like you've stayed on top of it, and, and this really hits you early in your term. You just began your term on January 1st, yeah. So, uh, and within the first two months, you have a, uh, uh, an, uh, a pandemic to have to deal with. So, But Yorktowners are known to be a very resilient group of people, so yes. I'm sure you benefited uh, in your leadership from their support. The, uh, we call it the Yorktown way, and people have just been so supportive and, and really going above and beyond. Uh, supporting our food pantries, and just calling up constantly. How do I volunteer? Where do I volunteer? What can I do to help my community? Uh, it's been really, it's been just so tremendous uh, and so inspiring, quite frankly. And, and as you know, when you're dealing with this constantly day in and day out, it does become tiring, but that's the motivation that, that I think folks like you and I really feed off of is, uh, is our residents and, and how positive and, and, uh, and their fortitude. And uh, it's been great. Well, we've worked together in the state Senate. We've worked together in county government. So good luck here. Thank I'll you give very you the much. official elbow bash. Absolutely. I guess that works for right now. <laughs> Thanks to you and uh, the members of your town board for including us. And uh, we look forward to working with you as we go forward. And thank you for your leadership. It's been absolutely tremendous. And, and uh, we, we look forward to a very strong partnership moving forward as we continue to work together. Again. So thank you. Thank you very much, Matt. Appreciate absolutely. it. Thank you for the hospitality here to be with us here in Yorktown. Uh, we were also joined by County Legislator Vidat Gashi, <clears throat> uh, Town Clerk uh, Diana Quast, uh, I think we had an illegal meeting of the town board. We had all the members there. Tom Diana was there. Ed uh, Lachterman was there. Vishnu Patel. So uh, we're very happy to uh, be part of uh, what was done at Jefferson Valley Mall. And uh, as part of our, our program in the county, we're, we're uh, responsible to serve as a clearinghouse for personal protective equipment, masks, gloves, gowns, and so forth, and provide them to the towns and the cities. We obtain them from Albany. We purchase some on our own and then redistribute them as needed. Uh, but whenever we get a, a major donation, as we did from Haynes Brands or from the Greater New York Automotive Dealers Association or the American Chinese uh, Association, uh, we're able to then add additional uh, PPE, particularly masks, out in the community. And uh, these masks are to be used in everyday uh, circumstances. None of us in our culture are accustomed to wearing masks. We don't normally do that when we catch a cold or uh, anything of that nature. But 
now during this pandemic, we obviously need to uh, make certain things that weren't normal behavior for us more normalized. And, and the only purpose is to reduce the spread of the contagion, to not infect people so we can get through this thing, we can get the society back going with a, with a minimum loss of life and uh, hopefully all go forward. So uh, here in Yorktown, as was true in Mount Vernon where we were the other day, in each of the different uh, communities of Westchester counties, we get around those areas, we get a chance to meet uh, once again, the, the chief elected officials in each of those communities. We appreciate the partnership at the county level as we work through these issues. Uh, we'll give you a little bit of statistics first uh, to tell you where we are as we uh, close the day on Friday, May 15th. Uh, we have uh, in the aggregate 31,943 cases of uh, COVID-19 that have been tested and found um, positive in the county. We have a, um, uh, a subtraction of over 29,000 cases that go back two weeks ago. So the total number of active cases, people who have not yet cleared the two week incubation period as of today is 2,711, uh, down from the peak of 11,000 and down a little bit from the last few days. We broke under the 3,000 mark a few days ago and now we're, we're uh, reducing the active caseload by about 100 a day over the last couple of days. We're at 2,700 now, which is a, a, a long way down from what was 1,100. We have one, uh, 1,269 deaths. That is 13 more than we had uh, the prior night. And uh, we've seen our numbers of deaths drop from our peak when we were losing 40 people a night down to the teens and the, and the single digits. But every death is a human being, is a family, is a story. It's not merely a statistic. And so we grieve with those family members. And it's particularly difficult right now because we can't have the kind of um, uh, wakes or shiver calls or things that we're accustomed to as a society, funerals to uh, say goodbye to our loved ones. So we recognize it's hard for the families that have lost individuals. They were loved and uh, gave love and now they've gone. But uh, we hope that when this is behind us, we'll have an opportunity to show proper respect to all of those we've lost. And that is why we uh, created the Rib Ribbons of Remembrance program at Lenoir Park in Yonkers, where people can go and leave a ribbon uh, in memory of an individual that lost their life through COVID-19. But uh, back to the numbers, our testing module continues to rise. We're approaching 120,000 tests uh, in Westchester County. When we hit that mark, that will equate to 12% of our county population has been tested. That's the highest testing number uh, throughout the state as a percentage of total. Uh, and we're continuing to see more, far more negative tests than positive tests. Uh, we're above the 70-30 split now, 70% negative, 30% positive. And we're heading most likely toward a 75-25 split, which means out of every four people tested, uh, one test positive, three test negative. And that's a good sign. That shows also reduction of the spread. The, the thing that matters most for all of us <clears throat> is how soon can we reopen parts of the society? It's not going to happen all at once. It's going to happen in phases. Governor's laid out a game plan. We've mentioned the different metrics uh, a couple of times before. There are seven altogether. And the Hudson Valley region that we're a member of, Mid-Hudson Valley or Lower Hudson Valley, uh, involves seven counties of which Westchester, Rockland, Putnam, Dutchess, Orange, Ulster, and Sullivan counties comprise. And uh, we have met the metrics so far in five of the seven areas. We're still trying to uh, hit the mark in the, uh, the concerns about hospitalization, the, the reduction in hospitalizations over 14 days and the number of new hospitalizations. And that's uh, you know, a total of brand new, not just net new, because we have been dropping in terms of net hospitalizations, but there are still new people coming in that at some level replace some of the people that have become healthy and, and moved on. So uh, we look forward to those numbers. We're continuing our antibody testing program. This completes our second week of antibody testing at the Westchester Medical Center, uh, at, and that is being held at the Westchester County Center, which has been turned into an interim medical facility. There are hospital beds there sufficient to deal with any future second wave outbreak uh, of need. And uh, it's also there now as a, as a location for us to provide these tests. We're approaching 3,000 antibody tests that have been done by uh, the professionals of Westchester Medical Center, and they're being processed through the laboratories at the medical center and uh, the information is being provided to those who tested. We have targeted first responders, and now we're dealing with essential employees in local governments as well as uh, at, the, uh, at the county level. So we have a few more of those to go through, and then we'll discuss how we open the process after that. As the weather gets warmer, uh, we obviously are looking at our policies regarding our parks. We've long since identified that the winter parks remain open. Now we're into 
the mid-spring, literally today, the middle of May is most people consider the mid-spring and uh, the weather gets warmer, consistently warmer. There's gonna be pressure on us on all of our outdoor parks for social distancing. And of course, the wearing of masks, which we're all trying to do. And we forget sometimes, but we try our best to remember and uh, put them in good order. We need to get some clarity on the policies regarding beaches and pools. Town of Yorktown uh, is interested in knowing that summer camps, and that's true of all of our municipalities. Uh, and we're looking uh, to try to clarify that from the state standpoint. The state wants to have uniform policies across the state and calibrate when certain things can happen in order to have a, uh, you know, an appropriate uh, uh, logic to the way things open up. And uh, certainly we're affected by what happens over the border in Connecticut and we're affected by what happens over the border in New Jersey, two separate individual states that have their own governors, and their own strategies. And uh, you may find that for a period of time, both New Jersey and Connecticut are open before New York is open. Uh, the decisions that the governor makes notwithstanding, we are gonna try at the town level, at the county level to do everything we can to be prepared to open, to have the right kind of um, uh, policies in place so that if you go into a public facility or if you go into a private facility, that every effort has been made try to keep you safe and protected. And it's very important because it's not merely just meeting some government standard or CDC standard. Average everyday people will go back out and interact in the economy, they'll shop, they'll be good consumers if they have confidence that they have some degree of protection from this contagion. If people do not feel that they can be safe, they won't go. Even if we open it up, you can open up a restaurant and when 20% of the people that would have been there show up, then the business is still gonna have trouble, still gonna fail. And if, uh, if we can't convince people that, that we're doing all the precautions necessary, then some percentage of them won't show up and we won't get the economic rebound that we're hoping for. But we are hoping that this will happen, that we'll be able to trigger the opening in certain waves. That's also why we're uh, testing antibodies to determine those individuals that can donate uh, blood that have antibodies. And that's a way to fight the disease. And hopefully we can make some progress across the board. Um, when we get to this weekend, uh, Bicycle Sunday will have its third Sunday up. Uh, all six of our public golf courses will be open. Uh, the vast majority of our parks will be open. We would not have all, uh, normally opened our pools by this point in the year. It's still about a month sooner than our pools would open, uh, but our beaches uh, would be uh, planned to be open Memorial Day weekend, and that's just a weekend away from now. Um, at this stage, the game Glen Island is not usable because we've set it aside for testing, and we're going to look at our Hudson Side Beach and our Sound Shore Side Beach, which is at Playland, make some determinations if the governor does in fact open it up broadly. We think he might do that as a specific. We'll also point out that even though the Hudson Valley has not uh, yet qualified for opening in some, some regions further north of us, the governor has indicated that there are certain services that were either non-essential businesses or restricted in some way, those restrictions have been lifted. So now landscaping and gardening services have been opened back up and are available for people to uh, contract with and go forward. Uh, they've also uh, made an effort to look at some of the low risk recreation uh, programs that we haven't covered, such as tennis. And, and the governor has issued an order to allow that to happen. There'll be some other things like that. And as Matt and I were talking uh, when we were together up in Jefferson Valley, there are certain uh, uh, items in phase one that really won't be very impactful to the average uh, resident. The, an old, reopening of manufacturing means very little in many of the Westchester County towns, very little manufacturing. Um, <clears throat> opening up uh, agriculture, forestry, hunting, you know, very little of that in Westchester. So we really look forward to trying to hit the mark so that we can get to the phase two opening. And the phase two opening allows all retail to open and all offices and back of the house function, things like finance and insurance and uh, real estate and so forth would open. And that will start to create, uh, you know, more of a sense of normalcy as we go forward. However, our update is pretty succinct today with those items. Uh, we'll ask uh, Catherine Chaffee if she has any questions for us from our friends in the press. We have a, a few questions. The first question comes from Dave Wolf and himself. He wants to know if you've made any decision on Playland. No decision on Playland yet, but I believe we're within the week of uh, making a decision. Um, we know we normally would have opened a week ago. Uh, we know that we're not going to be open uh, during this month. Uh, it's going to take us some time to open under the best of circumstances. And Playland is covered under a gov gubernatorial executive order that prohibits the opening of amusement parks. So uh, my decision to say, yes, we plan to open it uh, is not the final word of the matter. Most likely what we'll do is establish a target date for opening, subse uh, subject to the governor lifting the ban. 
and then subject to us having um, a sufficient uh, plan in place on how to deal with social distancing. And that will be very hard to do in an amusement park. I could foresee how we could do it at beaches more easily and pools more easily than Playland itself. But uh, most likely uh, what we'll do is establish a next level decision date, see uh, how we'd go about putting the protocol together to open Playland, await the governor's response. And it is possible Playland may not open. It is possible it may open for a limited season. Uh, it, could, it could happen either way. Next question comes from Mark Wilbur. He would like to know, now that Governor Cuomo and Governor Pete are going to be more every weekend, what do you plan to do with the Playland? Well, uh, same situation. Uh, I think we're, we're at a point where we haven't put together yet the protocol of, uh, of how to open the beach. We'll have some conversations about it, determine what we have to do to manage it. The beach has been open for dog walking, which it usually is in the off season. So when I've gone to Playland, I've seen people out on the beach, just not parked and ready to swim. A little cold in the water yet anyway, in the early part of March. We normally would not open the beach until Memorial Day weekend anyway. So we're not really behind the eight ball yet in terms of the opening of it. We expect we'll have some discussions and make some decisions as we, uh, uh, in the next couple of days as to where we stand. We're, we don't mean to be vague about it, but you know, the, uh, the instruction about beaches has just really come down very recently. And we were looking, we were waiting for that. And now that we have it, we'll start to look and see what we think we can do that would be effective. He also wants to know if the county is still tracking new COVID-19 related hospitalizations. Well, we don't get that information directly. One of the frustrations I think that any county government has, and certainly it's true at the local municipal level, is the, the data that's collected through hospitals, uh, through testing sites, is not shared locally first. It goes to the state, it's under state direction. Same with true of nursing homes and so forth. So uh, we basically have to go to the state to retrieve data and we're able to retrieve it, not necessarily in any format that we want, but whatever format that the state is comfortable releasing it to us in. And so the issue of new hospitalizations is not a number that we have seen. It's not part of the traditional tracker. All we see on the new tracker, uh, which is an electronic scoreboard, if you will, of these things, is how the region is doing against the plan. They either give us a check or they give us an X. And uh, at this stage of the game, we don't know how whatever numbers we might get, how that interfaces with the rest of the, the uh, seven, uh, of the total seven county district. So we're at a bit of a loss. It's almost like you know, playing a baseball game and at the end of an inning, the umpire decides how many runs you scored. But, but we're trying as best as we can to do the things that we think will reduce the spread while still, you know, giving people uh, recreational options and, you know, certain things. So that hopefully will lead us in the right direction. The gut vibe I have is that we have very few hospitalizations, but two per 100,000 population means 20, uh, no more than 20 new hospitalizations. And the number of people that have been infected by COVID that are out there, uh, even a small percentage of them getting sick would, would raise that number without the spread having gone any further than it already has. So I think uh, we'll dialogue as we have with the state, excuse me, we'll dialogue with the state. We'll make some, we'll have some discussions and try to make some decisions on what we can do to affect that. And, and basically try to get us to a point where we have a target date for reopening on the basis of the trend lines that we have now. There's always a chance a blip could throw us off, but if we're basically making good progress and then there's a blip and the throws back 14 more days would be really unfortunate. And I think we're getting, we're getting to the point where if we see Connecticut open up, if we see New Jersey open up, if we see the counties north and west of us open up, it's, it's gonna be hard to really justify based on you know, a couple of you know, points of statistics that we would remain closed. But those are the rules, we're gonna to work to try to implement the rules. Well, the, uh, the county has responsibility directly for Playland. And of course, as I mentioned before, Glen Island, which is a county beach is off the, uh, off the record. Uh, our ability in the first weekend to enforce what happens at all the private club beaches is gonna be a little difficult. It's gonna take us some time. If, if in fact uh, we open our beach, then we're gonna have to uh, put manpower and effort in that direction. I would say, I would expect we would enforce it over time but Memorial Day is going to be a particularly difficult time to do it. The, the numbers will be very hard. And I think uh, each of the different clubs uh, that have beaches, private beaches, they're going to have to, in the complexes that have private beaches, they're going to have to submit game plans to the state and the state is going to have to authorize them to go forward. It's very hard for the county to fully enforce all of those rules uh, across the board. That was the last question. Very good. Well, we thank you for your questions. If any member of the um, 
uh, of the press wants to speak with us uh, directly, you can reach out to Catherine Chaffee, 995-2932, and uh, we'll take it from there as we go forward. I want to thank Matt Slater again, the supervisor for the town of Yorktown. Thank you for your hospitality. Thank you for inviting us to join you here. And uh, we'll uh, I'll be talking to all of our municipal partners, including Matt, at uh, 3.30 today on a, uh, a thrice weekly municipal call. We'll go over some of these issues, identify the outstanding issues. Uh, hopefully we've gotten some word on some of these things and we'll go forward from there. And in the meantime, we wish you a very good weekend. Please stay safe, follow social distancing, wear a mask, do all the things we're supposed to do. We will get through this. We'll get through this together. I'm George Latimer. Have a good weekend.